Pastor Sunday Adelaide. Welcome. Thank you. It is so great to have you. The Bible says, and it is a guarantee from God. God says. What does God say? God is saying something good. God says that you will not be ashamed. A church is in us. A church is in us. A local church can change a nation. It is quite an unusual thing that a Nigerian would be pastoring in the Ukraine. How in the world did that ever happen? How did you get from Nigeria to the Ukraine? The Communist Party of the Soviet Union gave free scholarship to kids all over Africa. And I was not a Christian. But just six months after I got that scholarship, six months before I left the country, God just caught me. I got wow. saved, so <laughs> radically saved. So before I got to the Soviet Union, I was saved. Instead of coming back to Africa to become a revolutionary and a communist revolutionary, God made, got me saved, planted me at the backyard of communism, and turned me into a missionary. My first mission in my country is to challenge the government, is to influence the government, is to influence the media, is to influence the economic realm, is to influence the educational system, so that the authority of God will not be removed. The church is supposed to be the headquarters of God's kingdom here on earth. So in our church, I tell my people, anybody that comes and steps into the door of the God Embassy Church, that in six months, if your life does not change for the better, say I'm not a man of God. Well, it's so amazing that we met for the very first time at Benin City through the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa. The conference host of the influencers in Adelaide, Australia, um, the pastor and the host of this conference introduced Pastor Sunday and myself and uh, we had an opportunity to minister together in Adelaide, Australia. I was uh, conducting a major conference for pastors in Orlando, Florida and was the coordinator and the host of it and we invited him to come to be one of our speakers. I had to be at the conference rather in Atlanta with uh, Pastor Sunday and the minister there. That was the first time I met him on the uh, 13th of October, year 2006. I met him in 2003 at the Pentecostal European Conference in Berlin. I met Sandy Adelaide just uh, about a few months ago, actually, uh, in October last year when he came to Seattle. I met Pastor Sunday uh, in Denmark outside of a conference. I've known Pastor Sandy Adelaide for as many years as he's been in the UK. In fact, it was through Albert Kitcher that me and Sunday Adelaide finally got connected. I first heard him preach in November 2004 in Nigeria. So since then we've built a relationship. I met Pastor Sunday, very interesting on, on the television. The first time he came to Nigeria to a church, they started to do a pastoral conference. We met Pastor Sunday at Delaja uh, first in September 1988. He came to the same city of Minsk, Belarus. And he picked me and uh, he knew that I was a Christian and he invited me. July 19, 2006. I first met him on TBN. I met uh, Pastor Sunday about seven years ago um, in Jerusalem. I met Pastor Sunday uh, in Israel, Jerusalem. I have known Pastor Adelaide now for about seven years. I just met him for the first time here in Ukraine about four days ago. I met him at a conference in The Hague in Holland. I've known him for about three years. I have known Pastor Sunday Adelaide for a little over three years now. I got to meet him through my cousin, uh, Pastor at DBU, who uh, is a pastor of Jubilee Christian Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, we've been married for 13 years. I got acquainted with him 10 years ago in Karolova. I saw Pastor Sunday at a service then. It's been 10 years since I came to this church. Since then, I read the Bible every day. Look at any society where the church is not taking a leading role and is not playing a forceful role in giving direction, darkness overcomes in that society. Lord of all living things, we don't doubt that you have given this country into our hands. And as your anointed apostle, as your sent one, my God, I declare now in the name of Jesus Christ, 
and as a representative of the Church of the Lamb, we and I as the head of this army are taking full responsibility for the salvation of Ukraine. Dear friends, I congratulate you with this great victory. This is a holiday of Ukrainian democracy. If you won't keep your words, the people will teach you to do it. God is saying, this church that I have started is a mountain that is going to be exalted far above, far above all other mountains. Hallelujah. It is the church that should give direction to a nation. If a church is not affecting the lifestyle of her community, it's as good as it's not there. They were drug dependent hopeless and often homeless. Love Rehabilitation Center took them in, gave them hope and more than just a home. Хорошо, ребята, у нас сейчас веселые старты. А, как ваша команда называется? Папуа! Ребята, а как ваша команда называется? Асанте! Мы команда Папуа! Нам всегда поможет Бог! Аллилуйя! Love Rehabilitation Center is a vibrant social arm of the Embassy of God Church and is home to over 200 drug-dependent persons from more than six countries. Once, they punctured their skins with the arrows of death. But now, the sword of the Spirit is piercing their souls. Over 1,000 addicts have passed through the Love Center and have since been reintroduced into the society as liberated, happy, and Jesus-dependent people. In 1997, the Embassy of God Church set up the Hotov Orphanage Home to confront the monumental eyesore of street and abandoned children, especially in the city of Kiev, Ukraine. Kids are randomly picked from the streets and sometimes from very odd locations, often wounded and battered. They are then provided with emergency health care, food, shelter, clothing, and most of all, the warmth and love they couldn't get from their shattered homes and uncaring society. Dozens of kids have already passed through this home and are either reunited with their parents or somehow, somewhere, pursuing a lifetime dream. Dozens more are currently receiving the love of Jesus Christ in a way they never imagined possible. In order that just about every sphere of her society is enriched with the love of Jesus Christ, the Embassy of God Church also runs a soup kitchen that not only feeds but also clothes thousands of street-bound adults daily. You hardly ever know they are from the streets. Their medical as well as spiritual needs are also met at Stefania Soup Kitchen, all at no cost. Your goal is to make the glory and the influence of the kingdom permit through all that sphere of life. Pastor Sunday's uniqueness is nothing but his simplicity, his humility, his simplicity, and is a man of prayer. He's a man out of place. He believes so strongly in his calling. He is the most joyful pastor in all the world. I have never seen that kind of a free spirit in a man of God. He's ready to listen, easy to approach, he has his feet on the ground. The man is constant. The love of Jesus really reflected in this man. He's reachable, he's accessible, and he's a people's man. He's a deliverer and a savior rather than a preacher of the gospel. He just decided to go for God 100%. His passion for God is inexpressible. I noticed the joy of the Lord. He's a people lover. He has time for everyone. I've seen him spend hours Talking to just one person is a stunning rebuke to most ministers. I expected 20 bodyguards around him. Nobody was around him, just a personal aide to attend to him. That's all. He's never two-faced. He never has his own agenda. He's just simply genuine. He's original. 
he practices what he preaches. He loves all people. Thanks to him, people started to love God more. You know the reason Jesus preached? It's not because it's Sunday he has to preach. No, he preached all the time. Why? He was trying to release the principles of the kingdom that will fix every need that any man has. So he doesn't need to have Sunday service or Thursday service or Wednesday service only. No, he was releasing it all the time. If you could just get it, you are fixed. That is what the church was supposed to be doing. What I believe we should be doing is not just to build the church per se, but to be able to take the church out of the four walls of the church yes. so, and into the world. So what we are actually doing is affecting the political life of the country. Is like, for example, we had the last election of the last parliamentary election in Ukraine, and we had 600 people from our local church running for different offices. And we have the mayor uh, of our city, is a city of four million people, Kiev, uh, a member of our church won the, won the election and the, the mayor is now a member of our church. The activity of the church is not supposed to be limited to Sunday services. The main focus and goal of the church is to disseminate the truth of the kingdom and the principles of God into every sphere of life so that nobody will be living in your city without walking in the truth of God. Some of the lessons that we learned in our past but have forgotten in the West, he's reviving those. Also, touched by his words, my heart was endeared to his. He would meet me for the first time, hear the vision, what God's called us to do, to take film entertainment properties around the world and immediately see that it is a kingdom business. The big change in my life is just being able to be a close friend to him. I love to help poor people, but when I had Sunday and he prayed for me, it's like that seed blossomed. Between that November and February, uh, which is about three months, God has led our church in Abuja to open 15 different feeding centers where people are eating free food every day. When we're discouraged, he gives us courage to go on, and um, he personally has um, broadened my, my scope and my vision for what the Lord wants me and my family to do uh, where we are. His ministry is called God Embassy and, uh, and, and it's feeding into the entire body of Christ. There's an impartation of grace. Uh, there's a great faith that's imparted in spending time together with Sunday. It makes you know that late. there's more you can do, there's so far you can catch, there are certain things you can tap into. My life has been transformed by just the way that he lives and walks. It's always the same person. It was decided strategically to set up a Bible school where we can train students, leaders, who will be able to hold this future, uh, lead this future revival. His ministry has affected me greatly to affect other women and my, the body of Christ in Nigeria. There's a boldness in Pastor Sunday to confront erroneous teaching. Since I met him last July, I began to take seriously going to pray. I did a prophetic act by taking off my jacket and all that, and said that I was going to meet the people where they are, particularly the down and the out. I had visions and dreams of something close to what he was doing, but I really didn't know how to express it, and I had no model to follow. But when we started speaking, something revived in me. Past Sunday's ministry has affected us in a very significant way. Hence, we have registered a charity, which is called the Father's Blessing, and our dream is to bring children from the street, bring children from areas of farming, bring children from areas of disaster, and give them hope. I was still using drugs, come from Holland where drugs is legal, and I was one of those people that was caught up in society. He looked past that, he looked through that. He, he didn't see me as a sinner, but he actually saw my future. If not for Pastor Sunday, I do not know where I would be today. Being married to a famous person, to a person that God is, uh, God is using worldwide, it's like it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to God and it belongs to the whole world. I needed to give my, like giving my Isaac back to God, you know, what God has given to you, a gift that the Lord has given to you. And when the Lord requires it, of course, you have uh, to give him back to God. It motivated me, you know, to develop myself personally, to learn to know 
uh, the God that Pastor knows. I started loving God. When I made a decision to vie for this position, I heard many wicked words about me. And in fact, I barely had a chance to win. But when I came to our pastor, very quickly, I was assured that I would get this victory. Since I started listening to his message, this issue of revival, revival, to reach out both to the whites, to the blacks, to the African Americans, to, to the foreigners in Boston. And that is what Pastor Sunday is trying to preach. He's saying, if you can live your life right, you don't have to go preach the word of God. Your life itself will minister to people. You don't need to preach necessarily to, and go to the White House and making people to confess and their sins and things. No, but bring the principles there. Bring the virtues and the values and the, and the characteristics of the kingdom to everywhere you are. I was very frustrated and angry with myself. Why did I come to Russia? No church, nothing. And then Jesus gave me the best gift of all. Jesus came to me and appeared to me three consecutive days. Wow. I had a life encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. He came and said, nothing happens by accident, that he actually sent me to Russia. Not all good ideas come from the United States or from the Western culture. His ministry model may be more effective than our American church. God is using him as a social reformer. If this church in Ukraine is not uh, a, a modern 21st century example of exceedingly abundantly and beyond, uh, then I don't know what is. Pastor Sonny and I are uh, traveling throughout the world together to see five million churches and one billion souls planted in the next season of years. God spoke to him, you want me to use you but start from the people who are done and out. And I believe he went after that. I believe that this way the, the church is becoming healthier uh, and happier. To see the supernatural hand of God uh, despising every other law and defying every other uh, logic. Sunday is raising up a leadership style of equipping others to become leaders without condemnation, without focusing on who they have been in their flesh, but focusing on who they are in Christ. God is not li limited to race, color, creed, or sex. The Embassy of God is a, a classic example of the church as a platform where deliverers are raised, trained, and sent into the nations of the earth. Understanding that we have in the God Embassy that God has given us in these 13 years that has made us what we are, and we believe that by imparting these people, they will be able to spread it all over Europe because we believe in the raising of mega churches all over Europe in this end time. In God, there is a capacity for change. Not the change of just a human life, but the change of nations. I believe that God has given him a revelation of how to transform the community through the ministry of the church, instead of the church just uh, staying within the four walls of the church. Church is, is not just uh, a building, it's the people who are doing ministry. The responsibility for our nations depends on the church. You can raise up so many people and the church can run even if you are not there. You don't have to be insecure. I was with him for two, two weeks in Israel and he didn't make a call once to the church in, in um, Kiev to find out how they were doing. And I was completely surprised because I myself, I have to make phone calls and find out how the church is doing. But he said, look, the church is running. I asked him, how are you doing? He said, well, the Holy Spirit is running the church. He's bringing about the kingdom of God on earth. And one thing that we are not getting in the present day church is the teaching on the kingdom. If God really needs to use us, then we need to adopt the same kind of life that this man has so that we can do the assignment, do the work that God has called us in whatever city that he has called us. Every time you promise something, be it to yourself, be it to God, be it to people, that you actually do it. The passion you have for what to do should be your own ministry. Sometimes it's difficult to find leading ministers who are able to combine what they preach with how they live their life. So that's also Pastor Sunday's life's goal, not just to be a preacher, but really to know God, to be a preacher that knows God. And that's uh, why, God, why God is confirming his word, why God is using him, and why God is sending him to strategic places for him. Because he is not just drawing to God with his lips, but he's also putting as much effort as it requires to make sure that he is also a doer of the world, because great is the doer of the world. To love God and people like Pastor Sunday does.
day by day in his preachings he raises us up a church cannot originate from a man no matter how talented and gifted you are because i have seen believe me i've seen big churches that don't have any effect on the society i have seen big churches churches that have million two million and they don't even have a say people just ridicule them they just laugh at them they just make fun of them and they are all heroes in their pulpits but not heroes in the society we've got to have the approach of how to minister to the heart of men uh, when and I believe that God has given us the key so we still have 1,000 people getting saved every month for the gate of hell not to overcome a church that church must first be built by him your most energetic years are when you're 40 to 50 your most productive years are when you're 50 to 60 if you've done this much by the time you're 40 just think of how much you'll do in the next decade and the one after that and may God bless you with continued health and protection. We are so glad today that God gave him the victory and established him as a force in this area. The world is counting on you to stay strong in your vision. The world is seeing you now. And uh, we want you to win. We want you to succeed, to encourage another generation to do the same thing. Some people say, Pastor Sunday, that they talk about the terrible teens or they talk about the troubling 20s. Uh, they talk about the tiring 30s, or the frustrating 40s, or the failing 50s, or the slipping 60s, or the sleeping 70s, and the aching 80s, and the nagging 90s, and the horrible hundreds. But I tell you, Sunday, every decade can be bigger and brighter. Our teenage years were terrific. Our 20s were tremendous. Our 30s were triumphant. And our 40s are fantastic. Our 50s are going to be fabulous. And our 60s are going to be supernatural. And our 70s are going to be successful. And our 80s are going to be excellent. And our 90s are going to be noteworthy. And our 100s will be the best yet to come. The guy at 40 is just starting life afresh. So the best of Sunday is yet to come. He's here blessing Kiev, the Ukraine. And he is blessing Europe and the whole wide world. God has more in store for you. God will take you far beyond where vision can take you because God is bigger than vision. God has called you to be a vessel of bringing in an end time harvest of at least 500 million people who consider themselves Christians already to really becoming disciples, to become sons and daughters of God. And I believe God will use you among at least 100 million Muslims and 10 million of uh, my own people, the Jewish people. I think that you shall be a, really a mouthpiece for God to the United Nations. So up, go up, glad like the eagle. And remember, he who has begun a good work in you will surely bring to pass an unwarranted and unmerited favor. We're praying for you. We believe in you. We are standing with you, behind you, for you. Keep serving God. Keep being that example. I believe and I know that the work God has put in your hands surely will be fulfilled. The Lord spoke to Pastor Sunday that when he will be around about 40 years old, the work in the Ukraine will be already so well established that it cannot, it cannot be reversed. Say to you that the nations are waiting for you. What God has started in your life is just small. 40 is just the beginning and you are about to move forward. I believe that God is with you. Continue to be bold as you are. Continue to go forward. We love you. I personally love you. I just love you. And I just want to encourage you to keep going, keep running. Every ground you take is a ground taken for the church. Every territory you conquer, you conquer for God. And also, many other people are going to come after you. I know in the next uh, 60 years, God can keep him. And uh, things will be happening. So let him keep raising children all over the world. Keep on doing what you are doing. Whatever Pharaoh you are facing now, God will give you that anointing which he gave to Moses at that time. And I believe that you still have many, 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 many places to conquer. You are just building the kingdom of God in the hearts of men. Those men will go ahead to build this kingdom in the lives of other men. You are one in a billion. Whenever God screens the earth again and he sees you, I know his heart is glad. That God that you know, that God will stand by you forever. 
Tande Adelaya has already made his history. I believe in the vision that God has given him. It's not by chance, it's not by accident that we are together as husband and wife. Keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Continue being the best. Continue living a purpose-driven life. To continue living a life full of God. Happy birthday to you. Sunday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. All glory to God, Slava. long life is your portion, happy birthday to you. Dearly beloved Pastor Sunday, I'm grateful to you for everything, and I believe that everyone who at least once visited your service will never forget you. One person of whom the whole country is proud. He never asks for appreciation, but he raises us up. I'd like to greet him on his birthday. And this person is Pastor Sunday Adelaja. Let's greet him. Let's greet him well. The one he's looking at, you are the laborers on the field, you are the sheep among the wolves. Go on pressing for the Lord, keep on pressing on. The best pastor, that's what he looks like. Make some more noise. You are the one he's looking at. You are the laborers on the field. You are the sheep among the wolves. Go on pressing for the Lord. Keep on pressing on. God bless you. Happy birthday. New unction, new anointing, new territory. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus, Jesus loves you. what a local church could do the world is here to see what god could do through a local church that recognizes and knows her position in god